Hello, hello. Welcome back, guys. It's been a while since my last video. Um, so I'd like to try out a little overpaint critique kind of series. Um, maybe share some tips and tricks to help people out that are newer to the kind of concept background painting scene. Um, so Curtis Ryan has submitted a few images and asked would I help him out with a few uh, critiques. So I'm more than happy to do that because that helps me and Curtis. It's a win-win situation. Um, giving critique can really improve your own work and you can bring back those newfound skills or newfound knowledge to your own work you know so um and then yeah just a little disclaimer i'm still i've been studying this stuff for maybe five or six years now so i'm still pretty new to it um so yeah i by no means claim to know it all or have all the answers um but yeah just the stuff that i am saying is based off the last five or six years of I suppose learned a few things but i've still a long way to go um so yeah, first one up, Curtis uh, submitted this Hansel and Gretel inspired image. So, um, you know, we'll start with this one, I'll just go over a few kind of things that I think about it first, and then I'll do a little quick paint over and speed that part up. So yeah, first thing you kind of need to ask yourself, uh, who lives here, you know, what are they like, what's their profession, are they a creature? Um, are they welcoming? Are they hostile? So I think Hansel and Gretel, there's a witch in that series. So I'm not sure if Curtis planned them, if this was the witch's house or Hansel and Gretel's house. Um, but I'll just take it for what it is. Um, it's kind of mysterious, so getting a mysterious vibe off it, I suppose. So yeah, there's a lot of things uh, working in the image. You know, you have your your foreground, your midground, your background. You know, it's divided up evenly. My eye does go straight to the focal point, which is here. Um, then you kind of have you have snow just on this part of the land. I'm not sure why. Um, you know, why doesn't the snow? Why isn't the snow on these rocks? And why isn't it? You know, coming in here. Obviously, there be snow everywhere beyond the trees as well. You know, on the branches. Um. And then you yeah, the, the edges at the back here, they're all really soft. So at your focal point, you generally, you want to have hard edges. Everything needs to be crispy and clear. Um, so that's where you want the eye to go. When things are kind of blurry, you know, you can have stuff at the e edges of your image. You know, they can be a little bit out of focus, but Around your focal point, you need to have harder edges. Um, so yeah, I grabbed a few. If I was kind of approaching this image, um, I like to look at different plein air paintings. And when you can combine a few different plein air paintings, uh, you can get an idea of what the colors kind of look like. So there's one here by Kathleen Dunphy on the left, and then another one by Susan Lacola. Um, so you can really see like the different colors. There's so much vibrance in the snow, and even you get all these little down by the river. Yeah, you seen that river here. So um, down by the rivers, you know, little grassy roots and plants and different bits. So these are all things that you can incorporate into your image if you do a bit of research. Um, and even like the color of the water. See how much it changes. There's so many hue and value shifts, and you can get reflections from the snow. Um, and then you can even see through the water here. There's like little bits of rock underneath the water. Again, more little things that you can incorporate into your image. Um, and yeah, and then there's obviously the rocks, the little bits of land on the water, or I'm not sure if they're land or rocks, but they're covered in snow. You haven't done that here. Um, so what I'm going to do was, so yeah, see here, your house is like, top of the house is like right at the edge. That's a tangent that you just don't want to happen. You really got to watch out for that stuff. 
So I definitely um, address that. So I'm just going to do a layer by a copy, make it a little bit smaller. Move that up. So I'll just blend that in. So yeah, it's my first time kind of uh, doing these videos where I'm actually talking and painting. It's quite a hard thing to do. So uh, bear with me, please. <laughs> Okay, so your house is out on a little kind of island on the water. Um, one of the ideas I had was, you know, maybe they have to get a little boat over. So, you know, maybe there's a little dock. There's a little kind of a little wooden dock here. You know, you can have one of those little creepy, little creepy lights or whatever there, hanging down. And you can have your boat. You know, so that's how they kind of get to and from the island. Obviously, you'd have to show way more depth. You'd, you'd have to kind of show the scale to make that more convincing. Um, and then, yeah, your snow would be on the wooden boards. Maybe there's a few little footprints leading your eye up to the focal point. So yeah, that's just one of, the, one of the little ideas that maybe you could do, you know. Um, and then, yeah, I'd really, I'd make these edges hard. Maybe show more bits of rock that are kind of lifting up the little piece of land. And then, yeah, you could have, you could have softer stuff like you had there behind it. But maybe not. It's a little bit distracting the way you had the smoke there, so maybe I'd soften that out. Um, yeah, there's so many different ways that you could approach this, but it's really the story that's going to drive what you're going to do. So I, I don't know if you intend to have the witch living here or Hansel and Gretel. If it was the witch, you'd obviously want to make it way creepier uh, and spooky and the edges of things would be sharp, you know, shapes would be sharper. Um, Okay, so um, then yeah, obviously it's an issue that the house is kind of. I think the house would be a, a bit more straighter than that. But 
But yeah, um, one of the ideas I had when I was looking at it, um, I saw this beautiful piece by a guy called um, Etienne Highbringer, Highbinger, I, I butchered his name, but um, I'll bring it up here. Really nice, it's on Art Station. So, um, so yeah, this was the final piece. Um, and you can see a bit of his process there. Well, before he started the image, he did so much research. He did all these different thumbnail sketches of what the house would look like. And then he found he found this one here. He liked the shapes of this one. He liked the side view here. So he went with that design. So this is, these are the kind of things that you should think about before committing to the image. Like really design your focal points. Do a bit of research. Find the shapes that you like. Um, so he actually used VR gravity sketch to mock it out then. But you can do the same thing with Maya or any other 3D package. Um, and then he's a different views with there. And then really nail down what the design looks like. And then yeah, beautiful looking up, looking up, great composition. It's just everything about that works so well. So yeah, that's the kind of stuff that I'd recommend. Um, let's see here, I had a few notes. And then yeah, just another thing that you should watch out for. Um, so this sort of area that you have here. Um, it just looks a bit weird. Like the, the leaves don't really look like leaves. They're, they're just kind of muddy looking. Like when you're putting that stuff in, you really need to think about every single shape that you're putting into your image. Um, so yeah, like get actual proper reference. Get proper reference for the trees and the leaves before you put them into the image. You know, I'd be making the shapes a little bit. I'd recommend using the lasso tool a bit more. Like actual, you get actual crispier shapes then. And the color of brown you have here. I actually pull the colors from these plein air paintings and incorporate them into my image. And this is a different type of tree now, but uh, I think you have a point. Yeah, just incorporating more snow into the environment. Um, you could really show the force of that river if you had some water splashing up and hitting into the rocks here. You could show sort of a dangerous element to the to the place. Yeah, maybe you could uh, hint at some snowy mountains back here. Really give that epic scale feel. And again, get some proper reference for the trees. It's a nice shape you have here. But crisp it up, make it sharper, get proper reference.
Let's see, maybe if the water like crashing into the into the rock here. Give it a bit of drama. Yeah, you could really try and show the speed of water. Get some reference of like, you know. Uh, just some of those rivers, you know, that are just got crazy power in their currents. Um, and then I just added maybe there's like a couple of trees on the land here. Maybe one, maybe one of them's broken. And there's little logs kind of falling into the water, and they're being like washed away. Yeah. Um, so yeah, if you had that three D asset to start with with the house, you know, you could make sure the perspective. Like, there's definitely a few issues with the perspective of the walls and things on the house. You can straighten them up. And these are at sort of different levels. Lower. And if your light is coming from the top right, um, you know, you're getting a shadow cast from underneath the roof. But you get a little bit of bounce light from the snow. Yeah, before you put in any smoke, you know, make sure you can have a lot of things figured out. You'd add a smoke layer on, on at the end. You can give a bit more, it's great for giving a bit more depth to images. It also adds that mysterious sort of vibe. Smoke out the chimney as well. Again, that smoke is like something you design, make it fit the image to make it flow properly. You gotta think about every single part of the image, get reference for it. Um there's a few little more a few more of those little uh these little rocks in the water. Um, and then, my, so yeah, that's more or less what I do to correct that image. You know, there's so many, I'd spend hours you now if I was to really go ham on it. Um, the other directions that you could have taken, if you were to make the image creepy, if you check out this image here, um, so yeah, the house is like up on stilts. And beam, wooden beams up, on, up above the water, sort of greens and yellows give that really creepy horror vibe. Um, this is another one I spotted. I'm not sure who these last two images were by. If anyone knows who's watching, be sure to let me know and I'll leave a link to their work. Um, so you can really, that really gives the scale of the this is more of a village now, but the houses are actually built into the trees. Um, the massive roots, and it's just really nice composition as well. Then you've like the wooden boardwalk there leading you, leading your eye into the focal point. Um. So yeah, if so yeah, when you're making the house, like just get loads of reference. So I was just looking up some whims whimsical kind of houses. Um, really design it out. Try and draw it from every angle, and then build it in three D. Then you can, you could take it in that direction of, you know, it's nearly become part of the environment. There's leaves and roots and trees growing out of it. 
all that sort of stuff. Um, so yeah, that's more or less it for, I'm not sure what else I could do to make that. There's a lot of points there anyway that you can improve on. And then yeah, there'd probably be a little dock over here as well. So yeah, uh, I'll move on to the next image now. So uh, yeah, hopefully that was helpful. Yeah, just uh, some final thoughts, um, just on the general composition overall. So yeah, just make sure you're aware of where you're placing your, um, your horizon line. So I think you have it kind of, maybe it's around there. Um, so yeah, just make sure your perspective, like I, that boardwalk I put in there was out of perspective, but you need to fix that hand enough. Um, and then yeah, your general kind of flow coming from there, then you have this kind of line of action, this line of action, this line of action. Uh, maybe you'd want these mountains back here, maybe they should be sort of, the snow should sort of splay out like that, so it's bring your eye back in. Because you, you just want everything kind of coming in here. Yeah, maybe like the line of the trees kind of come in here as well. Um, so there's a lot of little visual tricks that you could apply to the image. Um, but yeah, it's just it's a case of playing around with the shapes. You know, you could even have some sort of little twiggy branches and stuff sticking up here just to frame it that bit more. That's why I suck those trees in, um, just on the little bit of island, maybe they, maybe they frame the house a little bit. Um, and then, yeah, I think I showed you this trick before with the um, the threshold. See, obviously my values aren't very good, but I have them at the minute. Um, you'd probably want them a bit more like that. So the sky at the back would be a bit brighter. Um, and maybe the snow here flows in a bit more. The value is a bit brighter. Have some dark clouds up here give it an ominous feel and they're kind of blending into the mountain again i recommend checking out some of the plain air paintings for that people have definitely tackled those nice snowy mountains and there's clouds blending into them and then just sorry one more thing uh you have like a dead straight line here with the tree just watch out for doing that you know, you might be better off having it a bit more diagonal. But not too distracting, like you just you want that to kind of flow in. So yeah, definitely leave that that this time. Okay, so <clears throat> part two. Um so this is Curtis's uh, junkyard piece. So the first thing that strikes me is I'm not really too sure where to look. There's no real focal point. Everything kind, everything has the same kind of um, tone and value. So um, maybe you know you might like to add uh, some little lights in places. Um, you know, maybe in this shelter, there's a few little lights. 
um, you know, straight away that will give you kind of somewhere to focus on. Maybe, you know, there's a guy in here and he's working on something or, you know, he's fixing his car or he's building something. Um, so, yeah, that's one point. Um, next one would be uh, a lot of your shapes are kind of muddy. So if you take this one, for example, it's like some kind of vehicle or something. Um, but it kind of blends into the background. There's no clear separation. So you really need to darken that up. So yeah, um, so yeah, you want that to be standing out. You don't want those shapes to be sort of blending into each other. Um, same with this container here. All the edges of it are quite muddy. If you start using the lasso tool more, you can get these crispier shapes. So that straight away, then you have this nice, it's nice and sharp. Same thing with all these objects back here. They're all, they're all quite muddy. Um, then yeah, the rain. <clears throat> Uh, I'm not really feeling the impact of it. So I have a few examples here. If you look at uh, some of Jana Jurabov's work, you can check out his work on ArtStation. Um, so yeah, if you just look at like the way he's used the rain, like it just feels really heavy and strong. Uh, like it, you can see the impact on the ground. Um, you can also see it impact impacting off the objects well the plane in this case so just a slight little sort of soft blend there just above the plane just to show that impact so again that's something you could bring into your own piece um this object here is a little bit kind of weird the way it's starting right at the edge of your canvas so i'd kind of i'd address that I'd, Maybe this. You know, maybe that goes up more like that. If this piece just hanging down then. And again, it, again, this is quite muddy. You really need to get some reference for these things. And just show that. You know, you just really see the detail in it and the actual structure of how it's formed. Um, then the colors you've used, you know, nighttime pieces are quite hard to do, or evening time. Um, so if we take a look at a couple here, this is a totally different piece now, but it's a dark piece in general. But you can just see how he's used the values. Like, we know where to look. Obviously, the colors are way more saturated, but we're just, we know where to look straight away. There's no confusion. Um, so you could take that same principle. Uh, these are a couple of nighttime scenes by uh, Nathan Folks. Um, so yeah, this would obviously change your whole color palette, but you can just see how he's used the nighttime colors and he's got nice contrast with the bright, warm lights. And then you can see the moon as well in the back. So, you know, maybe that's something you could incorporate into this piece. Um, and then, yeah, just adding those few storytelling elements. Like I said, maybe there's some kind of, there's a guy working in the garage here and he's building or fixing his car or whatever. Um, so, yeah, that's just a quick one on that image. Okay, so part three, I'm going to address these two images together. Um, these are some nice little studies that Curtis has done. I think they're from the Pierce Museum. Uh, top image is really nice. He's done a lot of things well. Um, perspective looks good. Bar a few things. Maybe this chair isn't quite right. Uh, so you just got to watch out for that. Especially when you're dealing with a two-point perspective. I'm not quite sure how that will go, but it just it doesn't look right. So maybe take another look at that. Um, then yeah, just a few of your objects. 
like when you're drawn near down the table, you know, I'd have that top layer of the table. I'd have that on one layer. And then when I'm doing all these objects, I'd probably put them on separate layers. So just when you're doing them, you could you could draw them with the lasso tool, like I've been shown in the previous ones, just to avoid that muddy kind of look. So, same way back here, you know, you need to give these things kind of structure. Um, but yeah, there's not a whole lot to criticize other than that. They've done quite well. Um, I'll just show you this one as an example. Um, so this is a still life, but I'm not sure if it was Robert Kondo or Daisotsumi. They're color artists for, well, they were color artists for Pixar. Um, but you just see how they've sort of addressed the objects. Some of them are quite simple, you know, they're just, you know, they've just made the shape with the lasso tool and then blocked it in, like some of those paintbrushes in the back. But there's also a clear separation of the materials. So, like, you, you can tell that's metal. You can tell that's glass with the little shine they've put on. And then the wood has a different treatment again. So that's just kind of some stuff to think about maybe on some of your next studies. I think they also have a couple of free videos on YouTube. You can see how they paint their uh, still lives. So with this image, I'd say the first thing you need to think about is what you're actually choosing to paint. Like it's just as important. You know, what you chose up here is great. You know, it's working really well. But down here, I think your choice uh, you've given yourself a really hard job, you know, you have a massive tree and then the building and there's another tree, there's not really anything substantial to look at, um, you know, it's good practice to do these different things, but just so, just on your next study, be careful what you're actually choosing to paint, um, I'd highly recommend picking up a copy of this book, Framed Ink, uh, it's really good, for um, learning more about composition. Um, if you just look at a couple of examples that I've grabbed here. Um, so this is an image by Henry, uh, Henry Wong. So he's depicted this street view. And you know, we have like a clear understanding of like the cool and warm colors. Um, you know, the focal point is obviously the car. And if you look just how sharp the car is, and then look at his treatment of the trees, you know, there's kind of loose, suggestive brush strokes. You know, there's loads of different ways of depicting trees. That's just one way, and it's, it works quite well. So that might be something else to think about when you're doing another study. Um, he could have also exaggerated this lighting. That's another thing that you could do when you're doing one of these studies. Uh, don't just depict the light that's there. That's good to start with, but maybe when you finish it, try and change the lighting to uh, another type. It can be good practice. Um, like the lighting you have coming in here, it's kind of like a cool light, and it's kind of white. Um, I don't think you really see that. So uh, that's just something to look at as well. Um, and this is another one by uh, Rob Rupel. This is another way of treating the trees. This is uh, from his Graphic LA series, I think. Um, so yeah, definitely check out his work as well. Okay, so <clears throat> the final one. Uh, Kurt said this one was uh, inspired by Samurai Jack. Uh, really cool show. I've only seen a couple of episodes. I'm not too familiar with it, but I was checking out some of the backgrounds there. They're quite like um, the Ivan Darrell kind of style. Really nice. Um, so first thing I'd say with this is, um, so it appears to be, you know, like a scary dungeon entrance. Um, but like, you know, I don't think we really feel that because the entrance is so small. So you have competing elements here. Uh, so like the size of this skull is nearly the size of the door. And then the actual entrance itself is even smaller. So um, the first thing you should do is play with the scale. Um, for example, I grabbed a few images here. Uh, this is from like uh, Oxen Studio. 
things for Tomb Raider actually. Um, so yeah, you can just you can see like the entrance has a really huge feel. Uh, he has a little character in there for scale. We can't always do that now. But, um, there's another one there by Stephen Todd. It's not an entrance now, but we're kind of looking up at it. It feels epic. Um, and again, these little characters in there for scale, but we just really get that grand feeling. This is more of an entrance now. This is a uh, Marco Drazic's Drazic. This is a really nice piece. So that you know that feels epic. We're looking up at it. It feels imposing. You know, a bit scary. Um. So that's the kind of stuff that you know you might want to apply to these kind of pieces rather than just looking dead on and it's not that you know it's quite small um, so yeah you need your focal point to be dominating that's a good rule of thumb to go by uh, so with this one 100% it needs to be the largest thing in your scene. So yeah, first thing I'm going to do is, um, so I've scaled the entrance up. Um, I'm going to kind of play with the perspective of it a little bit now. So I'm just using the start and uh, perspective tool. Kind of get it into place. Let me squash it a little bit. So yeah, maybe we're more kind of looking up at it. And, you know, like you had little carcass here and in the skull, you know. Worry about those things later. You want to get the main, the main shapes and the main composition in first. And then, you know, when you're putting in really saturated colors, you need to be careful because they attract the eye. So maybe you're better off neutralizing. They look like kind of mineral rocks to me. So um, I grabbed a few references of those actually. They could help a little bit later. Like see this one here, it's really nice. It has like um, kind of some orange soil or rock kind of attached to it. That maybe that's something you could incorporate into the piece. Uh, but for now we'll just worry about uh, Kind of getting the main, the main shapes in. So maybe I'll just make this a little bit smaller. Then you could really play with, say you've like little kind of broken steps going up to it, you know, you could really play with the scale of those. That's what would give us the sense of scale. Then maybe some of those mineral rocks are like, you know, growing out of the ground. You know, incorporate them more into the piece. You know, maybe they're like part of the wall even. <clears throat> so yeah, like straight away, it feels way more imposing. Uh, I might actually make that a little bit darker.
sort of blends into the environment a bit more. So if that's just the hue saturation, and I've brought the lightness down. Right? And you have these like teeth shapes. So, you know, maybe they could be incorporated into the environment as well, and that gives us more of a sense of scale. Going back in space. So, like, that's a good thing. Like, so say that school you had, if you repeated that element going back in space, then straight away we get a sense of the scale. You know, maybe you can see into the distance a little bit here, and there's like uh, kind of those like stalagmites, stalactite kind of things uh, grown. Yeah, we definitely need to make the, um, the entrance field part of the environment as well. So I'm just going to bounce around the picture and then kind of rough in a lot of the kind of shapes. And so yeah, I'll just grab this and show you what I mean by uh, repeating elements. So yeah, you'd have to play around with those, like they don't really fit into the environment at the moment. But um, that kind of concept is nice for uh, this kind of stuff when there's an entrance and uh, you're trying to get the ground plane to look real and make it feel far away. So you can just keep going with those, I'll just duplicate them. Yeah. So straight away, you know, we get that feel. I'm just darken them up a little bit. For the eye, when you're doing kind of lights, um, it can be nice to do a soft light layer. Just grab a soft brush and just kind of puts in that light without kind of destroying everything. And yeah, your your light was actually quite desaturated. You know, that's something you could play around with it, um, making the light more saturated. <laughs> We could throw in a bit of smoke then. Maybe the eyes are picking up some uh, some of the smoke in the air. But yeah, you can definitely overdo this, so make sure you put it on its own layer. Maybe you can knock back the opacity a little bit. And yeah, definitely uh, uh, maybe incorporate some architecture into this. Like um, if you look up some of the old Roman architecture, um, there's so many different types. Like, so <clears throat> it'd be a case of playing around with them, seeing which one might fit into your doorway the best. Like you could have some of those old pillars or anything like that. Um, maybe you could mix in some of this soil into the step area. And yeah, I just keep using sharp, sharp shapes. <coughs> so 
So when we zoom out, you know, we're just we're going straight to that door. <coughs> Looking up at it. Feels nice and scary. And yeah, like I showed in that previous video of uh, your man Etienne Highbinger, Highbinger, whatever, can't, can't say his name. Um, so you could take that door prop and really design it out, maybe mock it up in 3D, and you could place that into your scene then. Um, so yeah, that's something else that you can try. You know, there's so many ways of approaching this. Um, another approach, I grabbed a few thumbnails from Ethan Zana. So before you start committing the colour, uh, you could do something like this. He actually has a Gumroad tutorial called uh, Graphic Compositions. It's really good. Uh, I picked that up a while ago. Um, so yeah, before you start committing the colour, all you worry about is your values and trying to get cool shapes, nice composition. Um, so yeah, that's something you could also look into. Maybe the skulls have uh, kind of like a blue flame or something. Or a little blue light. I'm not sure how this is going to look, but we'll give it a go. <laughs> so yeah, it's a case of trial and error with a lot of these things. Yeah, you can try out lots of ideas, put them on a new layer, see how they look, and judge it from there. <coughs> it's probably enough blue light with just the eyes. Maybe that's like hitting some of these objects down here, so we'd get kind of these faded, um, just kind of faded light hitting off the objects. Yeah, it's just something to be aware of is like uh, when you have a light source in the image, try and show that light source hitting objects around it. It's quite a tricky thing to do, trying to get the right value of it, especially if the air is kind of dense, then it's not going to be as strong. So yeah, I think there's a nice difference between the two. I think you get my point. Um, that feels a bit scarier now, I think. And you know, you can push that even further if you're using 3D. And then like you had a little uh, kind of bones and a carcass there, you know, that's something. You know, maybe you could incorporate more like skulls or whatever into the ground or yeah, just more bones and stuff sticking out of places. But you don't want to overdo it either. Maybe maybe the rocks and then the little uh, pikes with the skulls on it is enough. So, um, yeah, I think that's more or less it. Um, yeah, keep up the great work, Curtis. I think your art's come along really well. Uh, you know, you just, it's really a case of putting in the errors um, and just, you know, just, just keeping that determination and getting good habits, art every day. Um, so yeah, if, if people thought this was helpful, you know, let me know. If you thought it was shite, sure, let me know as well. I can try and improve on things. Um, but yeah, if anyone else wants to submit images for a possible feedback video, I'd be happy to do it. It's really fun doing this stuff, and it's, ch it's uh, challenging for me as well. So uh, yeah, thanks, thanks guys.